Do you ever feel too lazy to actually play a game but still want to win? Well have I got the solution for you. Welcome ladies and gents, I'm the Spiffing Brit, a professional exploiter of games, gubbins and grandmas. Today I'll be showing you how to destroy a game by bypassing all of the intended features of the developers and yet somehow still becoming an unstoppable force of chaos. So ladies and gentlemen, the game we're playing today is the Guild Free. We've played it once before on the channel and oh my goodness it is fantastic. It is a glorious simulation of medieval life where you must lead your dynasty to financial success and climb your way up through the ranks of society. The game intends you to do this by starting and running small businesses. We however are going to be doing none of that as I'm going back into the distant past with all of the modern knowledge that I have today and ladies and gentlemen we're about to introduce these bad boys to capitalism. So let's begin. Today ladies and gentlemen we'll be diving into one of the most dastardly lands in the world and that is of course Dijon in France famous for for mustard and that's probably about it. Now none of the settings you have actually matter but one thing is very important, the difficulty level you are playing on must be set to impossible. You might think this makes the game more challenging, uh no it actually makes it a hell of a lot easier as we're about to destroy this game's AI. But first we need a hero for today's game. <laughs> Welcome back ladies and gentlemen and say hello to our glorious hero today. Now of course I wanted a hero that could blend in with the olden times of the medieval world and not stick out too much which is why I've gone with the lovely name of Lance because back then people used to get called Lance a lot. But anyway, here's going to be our lovely character. It's none other than Lance of the A-Lot family. Now Lance here has a very specific set of skills and that is Charisma. Charisma is the single most important stat in this game after intelligence, especially when you play like me. Doesn't matter what career you pick, ladies and gentlemen though, because we're not going to be doing any of them. You see, the game developers want you to actually start a business and run a business. That's a terrible idea. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to immediately scam the AI. Now, one of the reasons we wanted to play on the impossible difficulty is because in doing so, the AI gets a little bit stupid. And by stupid, I mean they get a whole bunch of money. Now, we only start out with 2,100 monies, but if we go over to, say, this dynasty over here with two members already, we can open up a trade deal with them and see that they start with 7,000 gold. That's wild. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to ask them for 6,000 gold, and in return, we'll offer them an alliance. They're going to think that this is a brilliant idea. They've just given me effectively almost all of their starting money for an alliance that means nothing. Anyway, we're just going to repeat this process again with the next family over here. There we go. I will ask for 6,000 gold in return for an alliance. They're going to think this is brilliant. We're now up to 14,000 starting money. Oh dear game developers, this one seems a little bit broken. Right, and there we go. I now have an alliance with all of the great families in the game. That's right, every single dynasty has put me in an alliance. Now, one of the reasons we wanted to start on impossible difficulties, they get more money to start with, which means they have more money to give me at the start of the game, hence why I now have 73,000 gold. This is an absurd quantity of money, and certainly what you would describe as a late game quantity of cash, but don't worry ladies and gentlemen, our completely broken methods do not end here. And this is logically the time in the game where we're meant to build up a business of our own, maybe start a thieves den and rob people, maybe start a blacksmith shop, the sky's the limits, we can do it all. Instead however ladies and gentlemen, we're going to choose to do none of that and live a true capitalistic lifestyle by just leeching off of the world and it's going to be glorious. Now you might think oh dear Spiff what you've done is you've got yourself in an alliance with a bunch of families uh, but don't worry we can actually just break those alliances as and when we need and there are pretty much no consequences to our actions in the same way that for the AI they can just summon another 7,000 out of thin air which is okay because what I can do is break our alliance with this family and just offer say a new alliance for a fresh pile of 6,000 gold. Oh, they did not like that one. Now let's try 3,000. How's that? Is that better? Nope, you really hate that. Wow, okay, this family, uh, they hate me now. <laughs> Okay, right. Relationship score minus 100. Fine, we have our new vendetta. Well, this is actually brilliant because we can do something very jazzy here. So, first things first, what we want to do is gain control of all of the most valuable assets in this world. Now, we've arrived at the market, a very good location for various things. Uh, like, for example, you can buy yourself a longsword, a crossbow, or perhaps even, you know, just a gun. All of these things are pretty useful indeed. But the most important thing for us to pick up at the start of the game is a riding horse, as this is going to allow us to 
to effectively cruise our way around the world at great speed, which is the most important thing we can do. Now, next up, we need to, uh, you know, set up a business of some variety. Now, normally, the game would expect you to, you know, actually have a company and employees and the like. We're going to do none of that and instead purchase all of the public domains in the world. That's right, we're going to buy the leases for all of the local quarries and mines and lumber yards. The reason we do this is because effectively it allows us to completely and utterly destroy the game. Because by having the highest bid, you, you get a wonderful advantage. Oh, goodness, what is this man doing? Is he trying to, uh, loafing around? Oh, he's loitering outside of my house. Hmm, this feels suspicious. Oh, someone is literally trying to set fire to my house right at this moment. Okay, right, well, I think that's a higher henchman situation. They just tried to bomb my house. Okay, they poisoned it. Jeez. My goodness, right, can I just have my henchman beat up this woman? She is the wife of the house I'm currently feuding with, but, um, actually, no, no, I don't want that to happen. Jeez, what is- Jeez, she's literally just doing this. What the heck? She's just bombing my house. What a horrible woman. Surely I can find evidence of, you know, them just bombing my house. Oh, well, that's fine. Oh, and apparently I've been attacked as well by this henchwoman here. Well, good thing she got defeated. But yes, it looks like this house that I have started a feud with, you know, wants to kill me. And that's completely fine. Now, at the market, I'm going to want to, you know, probably arm myself with uh, the latest in modern weapons technology just to, you know, keep me alive. So we're going to grab myself a lovely long sword, a lovely piece of plate mail, and I suppose whilst I'm at it, I can probably get some trinkets as well. Oh, I've been outbid, lovely. And whilst my character's getting his wounds healed, it's time for us to look for love. Now, there are a few things you want to look for in, you know, love in the world. And the most important thing is, of course, the value of your potential wife's inventory. Now, you basically just want to go through and see what they have in their pockets, and if it is highly valuable, then you should probably consider marrying them. Okay, did we get all of our lovely things? We did. We managed to get all bar one. Well, that's completely fine. We are still going to win the game. Now, effectively, what we've done is we've leased all of the resource providers in the world. These are effectively managed by the AIs, but as we now control them, that means we also make money from them. So, for example, this lovely trading woman here is going to go and sell all of the goods in her inventory over into the marketplace. Every time she does this, we manage to make money from it, which is very useful indeed. So even though we've effectively spent £29,000 in order to buy these resource providers, they're already starting to make us a fair bit of money. Right, now that my lovely main character is healing up, it's time for me to truly go and find some love. This woman here has some flea away on her, that's not good enough. She has some wheat, that's terrible. If you get lucky, some of these women can have genuinely like 20,000 golds worth of goods in their inventory because they're NPCs, and NPCs can just randomly buy anything. Like, for example, this random woman here has 12 ghostly fogs in her inventory, which are, as you can imagine, horrifically overpowered poisons. The woman has some smoked perch. What have you got? You've got, got wood, got some torches, nothing, useless, useless, cloth. Oh my goodness, okay, this woman's got the load. This woman's got the load. She might be 35, but she's got 10 garbs of arrogance and 10 woolen cloves. Okay, we're well, bam, begin the romance. Uh, Lancelot, go. I know you're not fully healed yet, but it doesn't matter. You're off to find love. Right, Lancelot has started a conversation. Now, luckily, due to his high charisma, he should be able to uh, effectively woo this woman on the spot just using the sheer magnificence of his shining plate mail and oh my he is quite the chad indeed and there we go the more we swoon with this woman the more she falls for us and we can even give her a little uh, whisper there we go what a lovely idea now this is flirtation ladies and gentlemen now effectively all we have to do is stop this woman from going to the market and selling her inventory uh, which isn't too difficult because we can just chain these over and over again until eventually we get a positive result but yes as long as this woman and doesn't sell her inventory. We've won the game, ladies and gentlemen. All right, there we go. Give us some flowers. There you go. You are my precious stone. Your words flatter me. I know they do. I know they do. I am the most flattering of individuals. All right, and there we go. We are properly wooing this individual, which is fantastic, as we could now potentially ask her to marry me. But first, uh, let's give her. A, let's give her some more flowers. There we go. Oh yes, we are winning our way into this heart. Go for the kiss. Go for the kiss. It always wins. Yes, it won. Oh yes. Right now, ask for engagement. Uh, will you marry me? There we go. Eighty-two percent chance. Yep, she said yes. So now I just need to make sure that we get married. So we're bam. Right, and fantastic. I can now ask her to marry me and we can have a church wedding. Lovely stuff. There we go. It's apparently what she dreamed of. Lovely. Oh, and my main character is actually finished. He has done his job. So now I will just have him escort my lovely lord. Although before I do that, let me quickly give him a horse so we can actually keep up as well as a lovely weapon. But here we go. It is time for a wedding ceremony. Lovely stuff. Yeah, we can just skip through this. Uh, there we go. Just come on. Just 
say I do. Have your kiss. Good job, Lancelot. Been a little bit of a shotgun wedding, but that's what we wanted because this woman's inventory is loaded with cash. So we're uh, bam. Big old kiss there, ladies and gentlemen. Brilliant smoochums. And uh, now that this woman is ours, uh, we're going to be able to immediately send her over to the nearest market. So uh, bam, it's over to the marketplace we go. And I now need to come up with a solution for that horrifically pesky evil rival faction that I do not like. Now their dynasty members are actually pretty easy to find as there's only three of them. They have this woman here and Mepheus over here. And provided all of the adults die, the problem kind of goes away. Christelle here is the head of the house, the most important individual indeed. But before we do anything about her, it's time for me to sell all of my inventory using my new wife and wabam, that's 4,900 and that's 13,000. What a glorious wife we have. She was just rammed with money. Now, if we didn't want to keep her around and, you know, have dynasty offspring, what we can do uh, is we could just have her killed effectively, which, you know, could be an effective way of immediately finding a new wife, but I think it's a little bit evil. So instead, we're going to engage in an act that is uh, definitely not evil, and yes, very nice indeed. And we're going to kill a woman. Now, you might notice that I own this quarry here, and I am leasing it for the rest of the day. And interestingly, what I can do is I can actually order the workers inside of this quarry to do things for me. Like, for example, I can order them to attack an individual. Now, let's just say, hypothetically, there was, say, a, uh, a woman who I wanted killed, and I had a whole bunch of people who could do it. Well, luckily, there is just such a family with all of those individuals. So, Matthias over here, of the faction that we're at war with, I am just going to order one of my workers to attack. Now, of course, they might not necessarily be able to win, so so don't worry, we can just immediately send an additional assistant. So well, bam, here comes the second of our workers to just go and beat up, you know, the husband of, of the faction that we don't like. Now let's go find the woman in question. Where is she? Oh, she's just hiding in her house. Oh, interesting. Right, well, I will have to wait for her to leave her house after she has finished training her charisma. But once she's done, uh, we can then just have her murdered. And right, now here comes Claude on his quest to, you know, just go and gank a fool. Which, you know, is a little bit of a morally dubious crime. Uh, murder isn't exactly legal in this day and age, but it doesn't matter because remember, Claude here is just a random surf who works in the quarry that I lease, and me ordering him to just beat a man alive is technically completely fine. Now annoyingly, said man is just waiting inside of his house, but I will have my two employees just sit outside here and wait for them to come out. They can't stay inside of here forever. One day, I will kill them. I've decided to uh, just adopt an orphan because it's a very easy way just to uh, effectively pump out children and children are very effective uh, they're effectively like little hype goblins and all in all the first day is actually over and if we take a look at our budgetary reports we can see that we have spent 29,000 on owning all of the resource providers and in return we've managed to generate a very jazzy 4,000 in profit which is actually very good indeed even by AI standards right and fantastic day two has started and we are of course massively in the lead our dynasty is by far the strongest in all of the lands it is so rich that I am in fact going to go out and bribe an official uh, just because I can and oh my look it's a henchwoman a henchwoman ladies and gentlemen ah uh, they tried to hire someone to defend themselves whilst they cower inside of their own buildings well it's a good thing that I can actually just gather up a few of my workers and send them to immediately go and start killing people because look who's out and about in the town ladies and gentlemen oh poor Christelle Hormont you came all the way over here just to die so first things first I need to find my closest supply of workers then I need to grab a few of them, find Christelle, and uh, yes, we're going to effectively have this poor woman executed. So away poor Emmanuel goes, as he's about to effectively go and become a criminal. Oh, it's Christelle, yep, she's wandering around. Oh, she is deciding to stand out in public and just effectively harass other people and say that they're terrible. Well, you know, that's one thing you can do with your finite remaining time on Earth, because I'm afraid, here comes the gang. Oh dear, you're trying to run away to um, produce offspring. I'm afraid uh, you should be caught. Why are you stopping? Stop trying to sleep and instead fight this woman. Oh, because you can't because it's technically sleep time. Great. My employees are useless because they're trying to sleep. So she gets away this time and our employees should hopefully catch up to her in the future. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to have this henchman fight her and then we're going to have our henchman kill her and then we're going to try and fire our henchman. This should be the opportune way of doing it. 
Okay, well, I wasn't expecting the city guards to actually retaliate, so uh, that means my henchman has died, which is very annoying indeed. I shouldn't have used my henchman, I should have used my workers. What a silly fool I was. So, wabam, all of my lovely employees are just gonna get to punching her, and even though, you know, their stats are terrible, there's going to be enough of them where it doesn't make a difference, and they can just all begin punching. And there we go, Christelle's health is getting nice and low. Yep, I think that was pretty much a successful stabbing. No, nope, is she still alive? Nope, she does indeed still appear to be alive, right? another 51% chance to kill on this individual. Uh, let's break her bones. Oh, nope, she's back up. She's waking up. Oh my goodness. Right. Brilliant stuff. Right, employees, you know what to do. Punch this helpless innocent woman. And now that she's on the floor, let's break her bones. Now, of course, we were seen actually attacking someone by the city guard, which is bad, which means poor Benoit here is going to get accused. And because he is technically part of our dynasty, that means we take the penalty for it. Now, there are a few ways around this. Now, number one, Benoit is only a member of our dynasty so long as we're in control of the area he actually works in, which is one of our many minds. If we were to choose to not renew the lease on his workplace, he no longer becomes our problem. And instead, any crimes he commits and any murders he's done suddenly are also no longer our problem. However, because because it's just a tiny pathetic crime of, you know, assaulting someone. There's basically no consequences for us. Meanwhile, I've placed in a bid for all of the lovely local working establishments, as this is how I intend to start making all of our money. Oh, and also our lovely Lancelot has gotten back from his trading mission. It was a glorious success. In fact, it was such a glorious success that I am going to increase our family rank to patrician, which costs us 12,000 gold. Then I'm going to drop down a new save file, and then I'm going to send my lovely lord here away on a long distance trade mission. This is of course very expensive, 13,750 gold, but if it is successful we will get some very exotic wares, kind that could potentially sell for a lot of money. If it is of course a failure then it's a failure, but once again failures don't particularly matter because we can just reload our save. Woo! Right okay I've waited for some time to pass and this house that is almost dead we've got an 80% chance of blowing it up. Oh and also a child of ours has been born. Come on yeah blow up that house, blow up that house, blow up that house, come on work. It was a success! We did it! We blew up the house. Oh, yes. There goes their house. Well, this is going to be a bit of a complicated situation for them because uh, they're a little bit buggered, as you actually need to have a house in order to survive in this game. Yes, I've blown up this dynasty's house, and in doing so, if the AI doesn't rebuild a house, which they don't have the money for, uh, they lose the game. So, um, yes, they're going to lose the game. Especially so if I were to, say, take 500 of their last money and propose to end the feud. Uh, no, they won't do that. Fine, I understand. They would never want to end their feud with me. Anyway, we're making good money at the moment. Our leases are starting to churn a lovely profit indeed. And the more and more we have them and the more their employees level up, the better it is for us. Oh no, terrible news. I sent out my wife, Cassiel, uh, on a trade mission and she died. I mean, luckily the trade mission was a success, so we made a bunch of money, but you know, she still died. What a shame. What a shame indeed. I mean, that's completely fine. Uh, you know, you can't have all of the wives in the world. So, so yes, alas, she He's dead, but this actually is a good opportunity because it means it's opened up our lovely main character here, Lancelot, to the opportunity of finding himself a brand new wife. So as soon as he's back from his trade mission, he is going to uh, set about the very important task of bagging a new lady. Right, well, ladies and gentlemen, this game is uh, a little bit perfectly balanced, I think is how I describe it. Basically, what you can do every once in a while is you'll get a trade event pop up, like this long distance trade report, where basically we've discovered that the traders in Leon would like to buy clothing and they will buy clothing at quite a high rate. Now the issue with that is it means I can just have a single henchman sit in this port and what he can do is he can trade with any city that is, you know, attached to this port. Now Paris and Lyon share the same port, which basically means I can buy clothes in Paris. As you can see, I can buy this camouflage cloak for 2,200 and then if I were to switch to Lyon, I could sell it for 2,500. Uh, this is a little bit of a problem. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. We are now making a very very, very large amount of money. Oh, we're now up to 100,000. Oh dear. Now I'm going to repeat this as many times as possible until effectively Paris runs out of stately garbs, which is, you know, coming up very shortly. We are going to effectively have moved all of them across into Lyon. Two hours later.
detail. Okay, there we go. So we're now up to 400,000 gold. And as you can see, we've done um, a fair few transactions in the last while. Very, very profitable little shenanigans indeed. Uh, we now have more money than we will ever need. And with this money, we can do some pretty decent things. Like, for example, we can bribe an official for 11 grand. Or just donate to the local church. There you go. Everyone loves it when you donate to church. Oh no, they did it again. A supply ship came in and it reset all of the supplies of goods. Which means stately garbs are back on the menu. Right, I'm going to buy um, 124,000 worth of stately garbs. And uh, then sell it for, you know, 127,000 worth. Okay. Right, now I've decided to get um, exceedingly cheesy. And Elaine here has now picked up a whole bunch of lucky stones. As well as these stately garbs. Now this is boosting his charisma. As well as his ability to bargain into the stratosphere. This allows something very silly to happen. We can buy torches, a very simple commodity for 105 gold each. That's uh, not exactly very expensive at all. And if we were to sell them into Leon, we would only be selling them for 104 each, which is, as you can imagine, a loss. However, it's not. Because we have such a high bonus to bargaining, we can actually sell them for 116 each. That's right, we can sell them for 12 gold each above what their actual market value is. Oh dear, that's a little bit silly. Now let's do with something a little bit more higher value. These citizen clothes, we can buy them for 831 each. If we were to sell them, they should sell for 833, which would mean we'd have a profit margin of 2 gold each. However, we're actually going to be selling them for 100 gold more than they're actually selling for, just because, I don't know, our lovely Alain here has mind control powers or something? This is absurd. Absolutely absurd. <laughs> oh, developers, uh, this does not seem to be working the way uh, you intended it at all. This is very silly. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Right, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. A few things have passed. Of course, I've spent some of our giant quantity of money, but uh, it matters little. We have far more money than everyone else in the game. For example, if we are to, say, look at the score, yes, we can see that we are, yeah, a little bit above where everyone else is, so spending money doesn't really make much of a difference. Now, one of the very silly things I've been able to do with Lancelot is effectively raise up his bonus to bargaining to 31. This is an absurd bonus to bargaining. Now, here's the thing. We can actually get very cheeky with our trade deals. For example, I can see that there is a pig for sale in Chalon for 48 gold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the marketplace of Chalon. So I'm now going to send my lovely lord over here, along with my henchmen, and we are going to buy all of the pigs of the land. Right, and now that I've arrived at the lovely marketplace, we're going to begin trade operation. We're going to buy these pigs. They're meant to cost 48, but actually we can buy them 45. And we're going to transfer them to our lovely assistant, and then we're going to buy even more pigs for 45. Now that that's done, we're going to literally take our lovely supply of pig just up the road to the market. Remember, we bought them for just 48 each per pig. Now, another thing you can do to cheese the AI is basically when they're trying to outbid you on all of the lovely resource providers in the city, simply wait until just before the deadline of 12 and then slow down time. Once you've done that, you can then go into the leasing menu and buy up all of the bids and the AI physically isn't allowed enough time to react. Wabam, it's as simple as that, ladies and gents. Oh, one of them snuck in. Oh, the cheeky bugger. Fine, one of the AIs managed to get it, but that's fine. All bar one of the companies are now ours, and I've basically stacked a whole bunch of productivity bonuses as well. Look at this, they're working at 110% efficiency. Isn't that lovely? Oh, we're going to make so much money off of these bad boys. Anyway, back over at the port, and I've noticed that these lovely handcarts here cost, cost 1,000 each, and they're being bought up in the old town market just up the road for 1,100 as well. So I'm going to buy 60 of them for the low, low cost of 70,000 gold, and then I'm going to make my way up to the market in order to sell them. Alright, so we're bam, we come over to the market, and it's time for me to sell these carts. Now they cost me 70,000 to buy, but I can sell them for 76,000 because of my wonderful ability just to bargain with someone in order to make them buy something they definitely shouldn't have bought. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. This has been a wonderful return to the Guild Free, everyone's favorite perfectly balanced medieval life simulation. We have managed to make far more money than the game ever intended us to, and our ability to bargain is so high that we quite simply do not need to produce any goods of our own. We can simply buy goods from one market and move them to another. And when you have a port city where literally moving the goods to a different market is as easy as clicking this button, oh my, that process gets a little bit silly. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Lancelot and his lovely family have managed to become the wealthiest in the lands. So if you enjoyed today's video, then make sure to give it a like. And hey, why not consider subscribing, you majestic sausage? And if you want to see more videos like this, then hop on down to the comment section and let me know what game you'd like to see me break next. As always, a massive thank you to all of the wonderful majestic sausages who fund these videos. I'm of course talking about you, you YouTube channel members and Patreons. And hey, if you're sat there wondering what video to watch next, look no further than this one on
on screen now. And I'm afraid that's all from me today. Goodbye for now.